buttons and have us go live. Hello everybody, welcome to Discussing Tabletop. It is February 17th, 2024. How's everybody going? I hope everybody had a good chocolate, aka greeting card, aka singles day uh, in the singles middle of the week. Singles awareness day. Singles awareness day, yeah. <laughs> One or all of the above. Do you have chocolate? Do you have greeting cards? Did you have single awarenessing? Maybe. I treated I... it like any other day. I did as well. Uh, so, it was fine. Anyway, we do have a big old docket in chat if you're joining me, or below in the description if you're joining us later on. Um, shorter than last week. I mean, the D&D section is just this abomination of topics that I just didn't feel like writing out all of them separate because there's just so many like little weird topics from Dungeons & Dragons this week to kind of give some two cents on. Also, so, don't forget to post your live notification. It didn't go through? I didn't see one. Uh, it's on the Discord. It should be there. I mean... Oh yeah, it did. Why didn't I get pinged for that? That's weird. Anyway. <laughs> Sometimes it's been weird. Discord's been weird. We'll put, we'll go by that. Uh, Honestly, my thought was, oh, I don't have a little red dot there. That means, uh... <laughs> yeah. That means you didn't post it when I looked. Yeah, you did. So. Oh well. <laughs> oh well. Um... So... Just because we should talk about it, and it has been a thing that's been worried, going to be possibly happening. It's been happening with magic more and more. You know, it, the one thing that hasn't been happening is with D and D is product bloat. I feel like D and D could give us more products, and you know, we'd be happier. I talk about it because they give us they give us never the products I want. They always give us everything else but the products I want. Um, but magic, magic gives us too many products, and. Um, we're yeah. going to apparently be getting two... Okay. So... Traditionally, it was four magic sets a year. Okay? You know, and that's been how it's been for like 20 years now. Okay? Now they introduced like a special premium set, usually in the middle of the year, where there's like a Commander Masters or Modern Masters or some kind of equivalent. Okay, premium set, middle of the year. That's five. All right? Fine. Now, we're also going to have not just one of these Universe Beyonds full sets, but two starting next year. So now we're at officially seven magic sets a year. And these aren't, these aren't just smaller products. These are full sets that take time to digest and play and collect. Yeah, that's a lot. Like, the six felt pretty bad. But again... I mean, six is one every two months, which I can understand to a degree, especially if they're smaller sets. Yeah, and the thing is, we don't get... The problem is, is we, we get... We don't get big sets like we really used to when it comes to big sets, but we also don't get small sets like we used to back in the day when there was blocks of sets which worked together thematically. Now we get, yeah. like, sets which are generally on the bigger side, but not huge. So, I, I don't know. Yeah, the premium set's gonna be, like, kind of reprints and stuff, but still, if we kind of disclude that, you know, it's it's more of reprints with a couple of new cards, probably. That's still six new sets, and two of them will be crossover things. And, and here's the thing is, how much can we have crossover stuff beyond Commander decks? How many times can we have something like a Middle-Earth a Tales from Middle Earth set before you run out of ideas. Like, I know they're going to be doing oh, a... Oh, there are plenty of IPs. Well, they're going to be doing a Final Fantasy one. That's one of the first ones that are coming in, like, I don't know if that's this year or next year for 2025. One of them is going to have, like, a full Final Fantasy set, which is going to be weird. And isn't there already a Final Fantasy trading card game? I think I mentioned that. I did, that's, that's, a, that's a can of worms. But, I mean, I don't know. I, I, think, it, I think it's too much product. Honestly, I think they've been going that direction. Product overload, like, um... Called Beyond Destiny. Yeah. Uh, I got the Dicebreakers article where they talk about it here. 
Um, but I've seen yeah, other articles no, about there's it. Yeah, no, there's a Here's lot. A I mean, Dice Breakers does a good you job. You say, like, oh, how many of these can you do? It's like, well, first off, they've doubled up on some. So I know they've done multiple Hobbit ones, <laughs> uh, or, or Tolkien ones. Um, they, 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 well, they did do some smaller things related to it. Yeah, that's true. Um, they did the one big set, and then they've done a couple of smaller products related to it that are separate from that set's release sphere. Um, and, like, you know, you could do one for every Disney movie, because I know they'd like a Frozen one. Well, Disney's got Lorcana, so I don't think they do... Well, that's that's an interesting thing, because they've got Lorcana, which is rather Disney stuff, but they are doing, they say, several Marvel-themed releases and Final Fantasy, which... <laughs> okay, I guess you can do a couple of Marvel sets, but again, but like, there's, there's so many IPs, there's so many ideas. Don't I know, know, but I feel like I feel like universes beyond like like seven a month is or seven a year is not enough to go through all the IPs. Oh yeah, I know that's that's true because again, you've got your four normal kind of sets, your one reprint, and it's only two IPs. But I feel like yeah. something that I think a lot of IPs would do better with something like the Commander decks for like Warhammer or Doctor Who is what I'm thinking more rather than full size sets, you know? Because yeah, the... I don't. Yeah, when you say like full size sets, so they're doing like full like instead of like because a lot of the universes beyond are usually like small like six yeah. to eight cards. Are they like, going to do, like, full, like, you know, what? however many cards are in a full thing, but the universe well, that, is beyond? Yeah. Like, the Warhammer and Fallout ones, as, like, four commander decks, they probably have, like, maybe, like, 50 to, like, 50 or 60 individual unique cards, you know, and then a bunch of reprints, because that's how the commander decks kind of function. Okay. So we think about that right. way. This will be a full, like, 200, like, like, 200 card set of unique cards. Oh. Okay, of unique cards. That's what Tales from Middle Earth was. A full set of you. Actually, how many cards was uh, Tales from Middle Earth? I can look that up. I mean, I don't know if enough. Like you say stuff like that, but until you like say say it explicitly, my brain goes, well, okay, big set. <laughs> you know, but no, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, Tales from Middle Earth was uh, two hundred eighty-one cards. Plus 170, I'm guessing, other treatments. Hmm. And that probably included, because they came out with specific commander decks with their own unique cards alongside of it, it probably was the base set plus the commander set that came out with it. And then, of course, yeah, 170 cards that were just basically special treatments of the same things. So think about, that's how many cards will probably be part of the Final Fantasy, the Marvel sets. So, like, 400 unique cards, technically, because some of them will be alternate art treatments. You know, for, like, Marvel, they might do, like, oh, it's a comic book-looking one or something as part of the actual set, you know? Yeah, I mean, um... Because, like, a big thing from... Yeah, because it's just... I don't know. I mean, it is... But it is. I mean, I'm just like, you're gonna do all of that. You're really gonna throw off the balance if you want to make them usable, you know? Like, that's a that, lot of cards to release, like, multiple times a year. That that has I mean, that's been like, yeah, an that's issue. Like, uh, yeah, that's like, a th that's like over a thousand cards in a year. Yeah. And, and f again, like, Magic does do bans to fix things within their various formats here, and there have been times where they've released something and had to ban it honestly right away because they're like, you know, somehow things get through the playtest often. We might see that more. Um, the other oh, thing... Yeah. yeah, the other thing is, like, it is a lot of cards. And, you know, Magic's has had power creep. It hasn't been nearly as bad as some uh, games, like if you look at like Yu-Gi-Oh Yu -Oh or Pokemon's power creep. But we no longer like it's. This is an interesting thing that I did see um, talked about uh, a couple, like a couple months ago, that there are no vanilla creatures anymore. 
And vanilla, I mean, like, it has no abilities, maybe just a text box of, like, some flavor text, and then it's just a power and toughness. Oh, yeah, now, that happened That happened within, like, the first... Like, that was the second uh, generation of Yu-Gi-Oh! Yeah. <laughs> was, was no more normal net monsters. But this is something that's only happened in the last, like, maybe, like, ten years, is we've finally gotten away from printing anything that has no abilities, you know? Yeah, because, like, when you have a monster that is the exact same... The only difference is this one has uh, an ability. Which one are you going to choose? It doesn't matter. You're going to pick the one with the ability. And that's the thing. Like, I mean, that's what basically happened with Yu-Gi-Oh! And I remember being in that stage because I was U playing Yu-Gi-Oh! during that stage where I'm like, wait, these monsters have the same amount of thing, but this one can uh, kill a creature automatically when you play it. Why wouldn't I choose this one? <laughs> Yeah, you know? and, and so now for our, like, common creatures that are just the junk that's part of a set, we now have things that have, like, some of the basic keywords, like, it's flying, or it's got first strike, or it's got trample, or just one of the, the basic keywords that are out there. That's our common stuff at this point in time. And yeah. who knows how far that could go when we get a lot of cards like this very rapidly. Again, we have been able... Magic as a game has been able to maintain that until recently, which is actually kind of impressive that they it took them that, a, a pretty long time to stop printing those, like, generic creatures. You know, they still had a place within the hierarchy of cards. Um, yeah. But more product means we might get that quick. I don't... I, there's a lot of stuff to worry about, but again, if they, it's not that like they couldn't do it right, and hopefully we can see more. I don't know. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, it just depends. Yeah. Um, we are getting a secret layer for charity, though. That I do want to mention but what here. Are you gonna? But part of me is also though, like, but what are you gonna do? Tell, ask them to stop printing money. <laughs> I, I'd say like print money more intelligently so you maintain that money and don't burn people out on it so they stop spending yeah. money on it, because there was a market crash with magic that happened previously. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's I a it's a bigger happen. it's a bigger market now, so it's harder to do. But it doesn't mean it couldn't happen. See, the problem is, is like a lot of people are being pushed towards collectors. Like, yeah, you might want that one card, but those people will just buy it. Then you got the collectors, who are the people who get a bunch of cards, who then sell them. Yeah, the collectors are generally the ones who like. I'm going to buy all these magic cards, and I'm going to supplement my buying them by selling the strong ones that I get multiples of. Um, I'm a collector. I can't collect these. It's too many. Like the the, yeah. the way that they've been going, only the most like it, the 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 whale collectors can keep going. Your average just simple collector. Where I was actually yeah. for a long time, I was able to keep up with the magic products and able to collect them, and it was a reasonable amount of money. It's not that anymore. Yeah. Yeah, because like there was a, probably a point. Because the problem is, is, is when you're generating so much cards, the vast majority of them to keep up with that are going to be garbage. If you don't want to do power creep, the vast majority of them are going to be garbage. Meaning, uh, people aren't going to be buying them. Meaning, you're going to be buying a lot of like people who want to collect are going to be buying a lot of useless things and not being able to sell as much. I mean, that's, I guess that's where they're winning with Secret Layers a little bit, because that's a mixed bag. Because on average, the concept of Secret Layer, it's reprints that people could use that we're not getting anywhere else with special art. Okay, it works. Granted, it's been a mixed bag, but again, that's kind of where they're thinking that they can get more products out like that. Because they can just like, look, we have fancy art ideas. But feels like they're putting so many of those out that we're running out of ideas, because I think last year... It was counted that there were more secret layers than there were weeks in the year last year. Oh, I, that, that, I'm surprised that that wasn't obvious. My brain was just all like, felt like we were talking about like two a week for a while. It, it, that's the thing is, it's the first year that actually has happened. It's been close. The previous couple, like the previous year before that was close. <laughs> but this is the first time we actually have passed it now. Uh... But Sheldon Mennery um, was Speaking someone of that, layers. yeah, yeah, um, was one of the persons that helped develop Commander, the big format that people love nowadays. Um, so they've got a secret layer called Sheldon's Spellbook that's benefiting to the American Cancer Society. Um, 
I don't know a lot about Sheldon. I assume he passed away due to cancer, hence why that that is the organization that's been chosen. Um, Fifty percent of the product price will be donated to that to help fight cancer. Um, what cards are in it? Um, I don't know if the cards are uh, very um, costly. Uh, you know, I don't know the off the top of my head. I couldn't tell you, but they do with the like. Uh, one car the one the one re reskin for Sheldon the Commander. Uh the rune on the Fomori is as Sheldon the Commander there. Um of course like the and seven cards, including a soul ring and a command tower, because those two they don't have cost, but they have ones that are like, you know, related to this entire thing too. So um No, it's it's fine. You know. I it's Yeah, I mean, it was a guy who apparently had a big play in um, picking the art and stuff for the cards. So he's like probably an art director. Yeah. Um, who probably has cancer or got cancer. So they're doing something related to that. I. Why won't you copy and paste? I just. Just trying to. Co Hmm. What? Weird. That's just weird. What? Well, I just. What's happening? Uh, it feels as though things are kind of broken on my system a little bit, but that's fine. We can live with it. Uh, he passed away last year. Sheldon did. Um. Oh, he passed away. It says it yes. said that he had a part in making this though. Yeah, he was a. I'm looking up on the wiki site for the Magic Wiki. He was a level five judge, uh, leading member of the Commander yeah. Rules Committee, and recommended banding in the bands in the format. Um, okay, so okay, so he wasn't part. Sorry, I misread something. Yeah, okay, so he yeah. wasn't part of the company. He just was a big. Yeah, uh, basically the evolution to Commander as the. Like, a big staple format in Magic the Gathering wouldn't have been as much without his uh, assistance. Yeah, basically. so so I think he probably was dying, and then they reached out to him to help pick the art for these cards. Yeah. And then, yeah, and then these passed away, and they're releasing it. Yeah. Man. Uh, so, at least he got a chance to, you know, do something like that. Um... Be, uh, you know, uh, what's it called? Immortalized, that's the word. Yeah. He had a chance to be immortalized, and, you know, it, it's something that, you know, we can reflect upon that, he, you know, uh, he did a very good job elevating, um, helping elevate Commander to what it is today. So. <sighs> At least sometimes Wizards gives us something feel good. So. <laughs> Yeah, that's actually yeah. Where <laughs> to start with this mess? D and D has too many topics. I'm curious as to what. They All are. right, let me list off. We can talk about their announcement about their 50th anniversary stuff, including uh, conventions and upcoming releases from this year. Uh, Humblewood has been introduced into D and D Beyond. The Dry Dra Dragonlance live action project is seemingly dead. Uh, we've got the dragons that Momo introduced to us. D&D uh, &D is going to be doing a lot more side products we can talk like about. The, the, the dragon should be last, because that's kind of a bridge between D&D &D and Paizo. True. I'll put that last. Um, there's an update on a video game developing studio that uh, wasn't going well related. Uh, Hasbro's put out their financial reports, which we can Ooh, talk about. Uh... Um, D &D also, there's been talk of modeling D&D's future... After a little bit of uh, MTG's Universes Beyond pop culture crossovers, which also doesn't sound great. Plus, uh, before we do the dragons, we also have a D&D stage show to talk about. That's why there's all these topics. All right, where do we begin? Let's we begin at the 50th anniversary stuff. <laughs> all right, there you go. Let's start. Uh, and that's why D&D has too many topics. So... We are getting slight bits of celebration on D&D &D turning 50. 
Uh, they're giving an anniversary wallpaper, so, eh. Uh, we know most of the events that they're going to be participating on, participating on from uh, Gary Khan. It, it's hmm? a silver Durgan. It is a silver Durgan, looking mighty and silver. Almost like he's made of metal. It's very cool looking, actually. A bit of art. Um, so, all the way from Gary Khan to Pax Unplugged, at the end of this year, we know wizard schedule for actually showing up um so we know they're going to be at uh all at, mm, all the packs this year oh well all the packs in, in the united states this year east west and unplugged they're also going to be at comic con and gen con plus a couple other ones and one in london here we go where's this stefan <laughs> i'm just looking at the picture i've downloaded it and i'm looking at it and like full oh, oh. Full force, and it's like there's a uh, bunny folk, I forget what they're called. Uh, and then there's also like a kobold just sitting on some guy's shoulders <laughs> and this stuff. It's kind of amusing. Mm. But yeah, it looks like a giant silver dragon giving like a speech, is what it looks like it's supposed to be. Mm. Inspiring the, the common folk. Yeah. We also have the release dates for a lot of the major books this year. Uh, the first one that they have announced is core, that's coming out is going to be the Vecna Eye of Ruin in May. Then there's the 50th anniversary making of book, which was a pretty cool idea in June. July has the quest for the staircase. And that's when we get into the 2024 material with the Player's Handbook being released in September on the 17th. That's Ooh. not a birthday gift I was looking forward to, but I guess it's, they're giving it to me. Um... And then, uh, uh, I mean, they they were pushing for twenty twenty four. So, I mean, it's, it's it's releasing on my birthday. That's a joke. <laughs> oh, sorry, I, I'm not like intimately familiar with your birthday. I know, birthday I understand. Mm -hmm. Then for November for the DMG, remember. it's fine. I, I put stuff in my calendar to remember it because I don't remember it either. Um, the DMGs will be out in November, uh, two months later, and then three months after that we get Monster Manual in 2025. So, they are spread out. Yeah. I can see why they're putting a little bit of extra time for Monster Manual. I mean, Paizo's doing the same. <laughs> um, it takes a lot to redo that and go over all the monsters. Um, especially if they're planning to do uh, new art. Do you know if they're... Uh, so. Most likely, they're doing like all new art for the Player's Handbook. So, I mean, that's the... That's the one thing that's really cool. New art. I like new art. All right, whatever. I mean, you know, that's a very interesting and neat idea. We love it. I'm very excited for the new DMG because they're like, our last GMG, DMG was horrible. It wasn't well organized. There's a lot of useless stuff in there. It didn't really explain things super well. And I know they said they're going to try and actually like make it much better. And I'm excited for that because I think it needs it. They're going to like actually go over like magic items better. They're going to go over like... some other stuff better. I think it's the thing that, like, the more I, the, the what I've heard about it and what I've seen that they've developed, I think it's a pretty good thing. I just think it's it's just too different from original D and D to be com uh, to be compared to it. You know, the same way. You know, it's it's the it's that concept of yes, they are compatible with each other, but one is intrinsically better than the other technically. You know, in yeah. the way that's built and made, it's more curtailed. It's more balanced. They've done a lot of work to fix things. Is it super overpowered in comparison to the other one? No. It wouldn't be. Pro yeah, the problem is is more of the nerfs. Because, again, like we've talked about this before. Mm -hmm. um, if you say you can use both interchangeably, then anyone who's a min-maxer or a munchkin will instantly go, I'll pick this subclass and this class from the two different versions to get the maximum benefit. And I know GMs can do, okay, whatever, but rules is written. That's what you're, yeah. you're allowed to do that, which is dumb. Well, I mean, like, they kind of did that for 3.0 to 3.5. But in 3.5, they basically said, use anything from 3.0 with GM discretion. They basically said. Yeah. Which they, they haven't said that here because they're putting an onus on the players that they're giving the players the option. And they're like, oh, you don't have to buy it. But again, it's it's... It's marketing stuff. I feel like a lot of stuff in there to them, but we've chatted yeah, about I'm it. Gonna buy them, but... <laughs> I'm gonna I'll... buy them, but I'm gonna buy them. But I honestly I'm... wouldn't recommend people buying them because it's not gonna be much extra stuff. It's gonna be the same stuff. Get it online like everyone else. 
again, like, I might get it for, you know, the fact that I'm in the sphere of talking about stuff with this, too. At least maybe the player's handbook, you know. I'll see. And I'll, yeah, and I want to have some more official stuff because I will run it more, you know, on mm -hmm. stream and stuff. I need to start organizing a stream for role playing mm -hmm. games. Probably will be Pathfinder. Because I want to try to. Mm hmm. Okay. So now we have, um, which is interesting, we're getting the Humblewood campaign setting on D&D Beyond. So that statement in and of itself doesn't really mean a lot when you just say it like that. But it is another group outside of D&D, &D, and are they effectively... It's the question is, like, I guess we don't know what deal they made, so it could just be that, like, they are being presented... We don't know if, you know, D&D &D has a lot more stakes in them. Is it going to be something more akin to Eberron, where sort of the original people kind of have partial ownership over it, but D&D &D also has kind of partial ownership over it, so they really can only do stuff with D&D? &D. It's kind of like this weird situation with Eberron, and would Humble would be submitting themselves to that kind of thing to change things as it is now, or did they have a different deal or something, you know? It, it, there's a lot of interesting I, questions about the back end of stuff I'm interested so in. So what I'm what I'm curious is, uh, yeah. So okay, so it's Hit Point Press is the other one. Um, yes. Their name is on it, but like here's this doesn't surprise me. They've done this with a lot of other people. <laughs> uh, this isn't the first group. I know um, there have been some other things put on D and D Beyond in the same capacity. Yeah, but so again, it's, it's not that... like it's just going to be the same kind of thing, probably. I know, and it's cool. It's cool new material that's going to be on D and D Beyond, and you know the Humblewood campaign setting seems pretty interesting. You know, it, it gives a variety of stuff that you can choose to use or not if you want to do Humblewood styled things or include them in like your own worlds and stuff like that. Um, so it's <coughs> honestly speaking, it's some of the stuff we talk about wanting <laughs> fucking D and D all the time. Options, you know. And it's on D and D Beyond, which is kind of the official place. So, yeah, I, I think it's 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 good for mechanics. I just hope that you know whatever deal um, was made with um, uh, Hit Point Press was great for them. That's all I care about. You know that so, they got a good yeah, deal, so I, and then we got this material. So are they? So is D and D taking over the world like they do for um, you know uh, Eberron? Basically, no like one has said, and I don't think they will say, because I'm pretty sure it's probably part of contracts and stuff. We might never know until, like, years down the line. I do want to say this is the most uh, furry book I have ever seen. <laughs> I'm looking at it. Everyone is an animal creature. Those are the it, options in this world. It does seem it's mostly birds, though. They're, like, bird no, people. No, uh, so, so there's the... Um, the, the one the humblewood campaign setting uh there mm -hmm. is the birds mm -hmm. but i'm looking uh it says uh options of humblewood and it's got species and it's got uh uh corvum raven people gallus uh who are uh wild fowl roosters and so there are a lot of uh yeah so there's a bunch of birds but then mm -hmm. they also have uh humble folk who live uh such as uh which are like deer folk and uh, mm. hedge, uh, he hedgehog folk and okay. uh, mouse folk. So, so there's also a lot of oh yeah yeah yeah. The, bird, the birds seem to be the focus and like the main species. So like it's yeah. it's like they're like the humans or the bird people bird folk. Yeah. But they have a lot of other species. I'm looking uh, closer yeah. at some of the art they put up with this, and I can see some of the other species. Like there's like a little raccoon person, a mouse person, and a deer person in the background. So yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, so the uh, the bird people are basically humans. It's like, mm. it's basically, uh, you got your owls, uh, you know. I, it's kind of like, you know, humans have, uh, you know, Asians, African American, you know, Africans, and uh, Europeans. And, but in this case, yes. it's like the, the, yeah. So it's like. There, there's, there's, uh, we have ethnicities based on, like, areas of the world you're in that are very, that usually have various noticeably differences between them. Uh, yeah. And so, like, that would be the differences between the birds. Makes sense. Yeah. That's what I'm gathering from my quick attempt. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
reading through this as fast as possible. Yes. So. Neat. So yeah, Humblewood. Yep. yep. Um, all um, right. Uh, um, I'll give the... I've got the comic book uh, dot com article too, but I'll give the Dice Breakers one. Because again, I like Dice Breakers. They do a pretty good on job on articles. Uh, but apparently... Uh, I didn't know much about this, but I knew that uh, some people were developing stuff for it, and apparently there was an attempt to make a live-action Dragonlance series that was going to be headed by Joe Manganiello, and he was working with the series author. Apparently they put together, like, I did hear about this in, like, other things too, like, uh, I've heard and read about this a little bit. Uh, they put together a really good pilot script and stuff like that, and they were looking at. Some, they're talking with some Hollywood people, and the pe people in Hollywood were like, "Oh, there's a really cool idea. This sounds really good. This is a very good script you have." Now, granted, a good script doesn't mean you know you make a good show. That there's there's translation issues that sometimes happen. It also depends on budgets and stuff like that. But it looked as though like on the side of what they had developed, they were in good shape. Apparently. Wizards had said, eh, no. Or Hasbro did. Apparently when Hasbro sold off E1 to Lionsgate, that kind of was what killed this. Um, and apparently, uh, you know, Manganello has done some things like try to like buy the rights to be able to make it still. Okay. You know... But Hasbro hasn't said yes at all. So he really still wants to make it, but Hasbro's on the side of let's not make it, you know. And he's he, it's like, so is it going to be dead? Most likely, but maybe, you know, he is a person. It sounds with... like he's going to keep fighting for it, so it might, be, it might happen eventually. The thing is, he's a person with money. He's an actor that's pretty famous. He's been successful. He could still possibly find a way to make it work to talk to the right, you know, person, give the right amount of money, maybe find some investors that want to help him pay whatever Hasbro wants for the rights to do this or something like that. You know, maybe yeah. make it that they're less involved with it. You know, that kind of thing. Like, people buy the rights and then do something. But, like, it's sort of like Hasbro, in particular for a lot of things, has been very hands in the pie for a lot of the things they've been doing with D&D &D and magic been. and, and stuff. Yeah. And that's kind of, I think, been part of the problem they've had. But, uh, yeah. Is that they're, uh... Because honestly, like, that's the one thing. Like, Warhammer makes so much money by basically letting people just use their stuff. They're like, uh, pay this rights fee and uh, now you can use it. And it's like so many indie developers just go, oh, that's a cheap fee, and then they pay it, and then they make a big thing, and then Hasbro <coughs> gets, and then uh, Games Workshop gets money. And, and, and the I feel thing like is, they could be doing that, yeah. but they just don't. Yeah, he Maganello talks about how like the Dragonlance book didn't do that well, but again, like also, I I did see some like I did some things talking about it. How like Wait, which, which Dragonlance book didn't do well? I Shadows of the Dragon book Queen, book. the one that okay. came out last year. Okay, but the thing I is, mean, I've, Wizards I've unceremoniously just kind of threw it out there. We talked about it because I pay attention to those things. But it was a very unceremonious, like, oh, it's out. You know, they didn't talk. Like, the thing is, think about the book products they're coming out with this year. They're putting out articles on D&D Mod about, like, the Vecna book. They're having people talk about it. Like, no one talked about the Dragonlance book. Like, we talked about oh, yeah. it, but barely. And I completely forgot about it. <laughs> yeah. You know. Like, I want to read Dragonlance at some point, but... I mean, I've read some Dragonlance books. I know it's not like a series; it's a universe that has a lot of books. Um... Yeah, so I don't know. Um, it's not truly dead, but it's like it's close to it at this point in time. So maybe he'll get lucky and figure something out. Maybe not, you know. But it would sound like a cool idea, and you know, See, there were what, what bothers. What bothers me is that they are... Here's an actor who's got a heart and soul for it, and things where, where you've got someone who's who's on like the production team who's got a heart and soul in it mm -hmm. tend to do pretty well, uh, from my experience. As long as they get enough say. Yeah. 
And the thing is, bothers me that they're like saying, "Oh no" to this, but then they're going and like, "Eh, we'll do a D and D TV series on HBO." I think it is. And the thing is, or, no, he was, on uh, Paramount Plus. That's what it is. He was working with like the co-authors of this thing, you know, yeah. or the, one of the authors of this thing to build like the script, which kind of sounds like, "Oh, okay, you're actually talking with some of the people that helped develop the world as it is," you know. Yeah. Um, I think there's some real benefit to this. I just think Hasbro wants to have their hand in the pie, but doesn't want to have any more pies right now. Mm -hmm. Is the problem. It's like, oh no, we actually want to be involved in this, but we're not going to be involved right now, so we'll just wait. And, we put and, our but hands but too wait, much in wait. entertainment pie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but wait. Yeah, because like their entertainment was like the worst part of their department, you know? <laughs> if I remember correctly. It did very badly. According to yeah. their, we'll get to that. But according to their report, the entertainment division, what well, division was like a, woo. so yeah. Ha. Ah. So good luck, Joe Manganiello. Good luck. Yeah, I hope it works out. Honestly, mm -hmm. I want more fantasy, good fantasy content. I feel like there yeah. hasn't been much. You know, just a minor tangent. I feel like there hasn't been a lot of good, like pure fantasy. Like shows and content. Like, it's all anime right now. That's one, another one of the reasons that like I've been very heavy onto a lot of anime because I'm sorry. Yeah, you're right. There isn't a lot of good fantasy content that's out there beyond, unfortunately, anime at this point in time. And even then, it's not necessarily good. <laughs> yeah, I take what I can yeah. get a lot of times. I feel like that the superhero and sci-fi are like really big right. Now. They are very dominating the market. And there are places for fantasy, too. People love Lord yeah. of the Rings, you know? If they didn't squander it on things like the Hobbit movies, which honestly they did. Or on, or on um, not the Hobbit, I would even say, but uh, the uh, Ring series. What's, what was that called? Rings of Power, the, the TV yeah, series they one. did? Yeah, I, I heard I it wasn't... I, I heard mixed bags about it. I don't think I think overall it wasn't terrible. It just wasn't great either. Yeah, that's really what it is. It was very middle bar, and it's like they put billions of dollars into something that was like I think it was. Uh, I, I love a very interesting post that showed like you know here are a couple of nice shots from Lord of the Rings the trilogy, mm -hmm. uh, the original trilogy of those uh, that uh, was done on like a uh, like. Five million dollar budget. Now mm -hmm. here's the one million dollar budget, <laughs> Rings of Power, uh, and it's like just not even close. Like that's the thing is like if you just look at the, it's like so much money just went to random people and no one put in effort and it turned out okay because there were enough people involved who cared. But there's just yeah, yeah. And that's the thing. There's just not a lot of good fantasy content right now. So. Let's talk about some other D and D products because I heard the leak over the D and D Lego set, but I hadn't heard about these other two here that they're also doing. So we're gonna see D and D Converse shoes, and of course, D and D Pop Tarts. What kind of flavor I mean, would they be? <laughs> Are these gonna be like? Is this just like normal flavors, but somehow D and D themed? Um, I mean, it could just have like a dragon on it. <laughs> I guess that'd be um, kind of cool. I guess they do that a lot with things, though. Too, it's sort of like it's our thing, but now we've made it look like something else. Also, that reminds me. I want to go buy those uh, stamps, and you go see if we have them. Mm -hmm. cool. I wanted the D and D stamps that were supposed to be coming <clears> this year. I I did see some leaks on the Lego set, and it looks really cool. But it's also apparently incredibly expensive. Um, but again, Lego sets are expensive Generally anyway. Generally very expensive. <laughs> I'm sorry, but they are. <laughs> <laughs> they've gotten worse uh, as I, they've gotten I more wanna like... Get, I want, like, it's so funny, because like, now that I have money, I want to get back into Legos, but I'm also just all like, but do I really want to spend that much money? <laughs> There's like, what is it, a working, mm. a, a like semi-working Pac-Man arcade cabinet Lego or something? And you just, like, look at it, and, like, you can, like, move things, and it looks like it's doing Pac-Man, the game on it or something, like, on the back, like, you could twist things, and it was just, like, 
what the hell, man? <laughs> it's really cool looking. And it would be awesome to have, but also, my god, I'm sure it's expensive. Uh, so, honestly speaking, though, Lego's not a bad idea for TMD. I think that's a pretty good one. It's fun, you know. They've got some unique things. That sounds cool. The shoes, eh, it's whatever. We don't know a lot about them. Um, you know, shoe wear, it's fine. It's not my thing, but plenty of people like shoe wear, you know. And um, the Pop Tarts, uh, I like the j joke in this article that someone says like a, they're calling it Goodberry flavor. <laughs> if they did yeah. that, that would actually I mean, be really good. I mean, I mean, it. Knowing what I know, uh, you know, I mean, it it would not be that hard. I mean, okay, you know, if you ate a box of pop tarts, it would probably give you the the calories you needed for the whole day. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like they could just do like the mixture of like two different berries and call it good berry flavor or something like a like a strawberry grape or something. I don't know. Yeah, no, but... I, I I'm more making a joke on the fact that good berries give you uh, the nourishment yeah. you need for the day. Uh, but yeah, uh, I'm not sure. Let me. I'm gonna look at the picture. D and D Converse. What that is? Oh, we don't know a lot now. That one we might not have a picture of. I think the the only reason we might have the Legos is I know there was a leak on the on the set. Um, so um, that's that's why that one we can pro you can probably find uh, well, images of the leaks. Still. Okay, I'm 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 going to say mm -hmm. I'm not sure how much of a leak it was because it's on Legos I website. <laughs> Well, I, I think it leaked a little while ago, and now it's up on, oh, like, uh, the okay. webs. I think, like... Yeah. I think they're the not, leaks were... They're not were... selling them yet, but they're, yeah. they're up. They're, I think like, the leak is up. less that, that it's existence, and more that, like, oh, here are how's, here's how you look when you assemble it. Here's all the components in it that I can break down in front of you. Because, like, the, the box art image usually does a good job of showing everything, but doesn't always show everything and how it looks like in real life. You know, it's a... It's the oh, fancy picture. Uh, maybe that wasn't official stuff, actually. I mean, it was... Uh, never mind. Uh, d and Lego set leak. Yeah. I think... Well, okay, so... so that was back in January, apparently, had... it leaked, yeah. Okay, it was... Yeah, cause, so apparently there was some kind of d and Lego competition that happened, like, a year ago. Mm-hmm. And so there's a lot of stuff for that that I'm seeing, I realize now. Yeah, um, it's... But some of that may have gone into um, the making of, like, a new set. Yeah, um... Let me share this link here, just if you want to see the D&D &D Lego set. It's on a random page I found by this person that apparently does stuff for Legos, so... Oh, yeah, here we go. Oh, okay, this there's a link the to this one. Uh, Jay's Brick Blog. Hey, Jay, thank you for your Brick Blog about Legos and the D&D &D set. It's got a little beholder. That's all really cool looking. Okay, you know. Uh, not gonna lie, that does look really cool. Yeah. A little beholder and the, and the big old dragon on top of it that's, like, built into it. That's really neat. Yeah. Um, so... The other two things... Look, no, no, I don't think the dragon's built into it. It looks articulated, the legs and oh, stuff. That's pretty cool, man. Yeah. We'll, we'll see they about the... Those, like, ball sockets. Yeah. We'll see about, see about the shoes, you know, whatever on that one, and, you know, the Pop-Tarts, whatever on that one. They're trying to expand things. We'll see how it works. Um... Hmm. I mean, there are already D and D shoes you can get, uh, D and D Converse, but I don't know if that was from like a previous thing. Maybe they did. It could have been an older thing now that they're they're doing it again or something. Yeah. Um. So, uh, we are not going to be getting a different epic D and D RPG title. It's been shelved, um, along with forty four employees from the studio that was working on it. And that's a terrible way to say that 44 people got fired, but it's true. Um, so Hidden Path Entertainment laid off 44 out of its 65 employees and shelved its D&D RPG title it was working on for about six months. Um, we don't know a lot about it. Yeah, so we don't know much about what they were making. Yeah. 
uh, had been internally nicknamed Jabberwock. Um, and it was canceled after Hasbro and Wizards made some changes to their long-term portfolio to focus on games which are strategically aligned with developing our existence brands and those which show promise in expanding and engaging our audience in new ways. It's a way of saying we want more control over the games and we only want certain things which, you know, fit the, you know, triple A path of things, I think is what they're saying. I, it I don't sounds, understand that. It sounds like understand. they didn't expect Baldur's Gate to be as good as it was, and so they're like, that's a fluke. We're not going to try to repeat that. We're going to try to just to be with people from the triple A game studio, uh, uh, like, uh, industry who are in Wizards say... Let's just do stuff the way we would have done it. So, here's my problem with this, is that, again, like, what I was saying about Games Workshop and Warhammer. If you just make it easy for people to, like, use your rights, you can probably make a shit ton of money from it. <sighs> I mean, we know they've canceled other stuff, too, and video game-related stuff, so I don't know. But they I've... keep trying to have their hands in everything and put a lot of control into it and be like, no, our product must be the way it is. It, again, like, I feel bad for Hidden Path because I think that it was just being connected with Wizards well, and Hasbro. I think just they them. were having some issues and then Hasbro's just like, nope, not, no risks, bye. Yeah. So. Yep. There's uh... lots of possibilities for what happened, but I'm just like, all of them are just... Hasbro, you keep losing money, and then you also keep doing dumb things. We'll talk about Hasbro losing money before we're done here. I got a couple more I smaller know. topics, and then I've got their financial report, which includes. I got their financial report open, so I'll. Look. I got their the I've got their yeah for the one from their site, and I also have the Dice Breakers article, which breaks down that it was a one point six billion dollar loss. Uh, and surprisingly. Chris Cox got uh, 1.6 billion. Billion. I know. Billion. I'm just saying. Anyway, we we'll, we'll, we got a couple more before that. Let's let's talk about. Um, apparently, most of that was severance pay. No. <laughs> apparently, Chris Cox and his his genius as the CEO basically wants to do U universes beyond with D and D. So basically, you just want to do like all those other crossover, like just these other. It, I'm sorry, that's done nowadays, isn't it? And you want to basically like do it yourself? I guess is the thing they want to do, you know? Because I'm sorry, people do make RPGs based on pop culture things. Okay, people sometimes use 5e for that. You also want to do that. I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm questioning about the idea about this. Um, I guess, I, actually, it's... What's your... Uh, I'm trying to figure out what's happening. With this uh, uh, yeah. Models, it's digital future on Magic the Gathering, Gathering Universe is beyond pop culture crossover. Uh, but... I guess what it is... The universe is beyond style content. Oh. oh, I'm understanding this more now. Yes. So I guess what they're doing is they're going to do more stuff like... I think what they really want to do is more stuff like we've done with... Put a they bunch with, of shitty stuff out and uh, hope that people buy it, basically. But also, like, they want to do more things like they did with... Um, uh, my brain is f broken, and we talked about it just a minute ago. Oh, the the uh, hold on, I got it open. Uh, the Humblewood. Yeah, they want to do stuff like that more. Is what is maybe one of the things that we're going to see. Okay. Yeah. You know, okay. So content like yeah. Okay. Uh, when, of the next Friday, we use distribute and showcase more diverse set of content. Uh, Point to digital uh, strategy construction on a licensed third-party crossovers. Where can D and D crossover with anything else? Okay, I know where this is going. Rules for playing Marvel in D and D. Rules for playing, uh, uh, Power Rangers <laughs> in D and D. Rules for playing My Little Pony in D and D. 
two of those they might do because they already have separate books on their own, but they might put them into D&D too because those are two different sides of it. Because Renegade has been doing the stuff under Hasbro, but I don't know how successful Renegade's books on Transformers, uh, G.I. Joe, and those have been. So now it could be, yeah, doing stuff like that, and then they could include other stuff. But other... <sighs> this is one of those things... Yeah. I'm going to say here. D&D this... D &D players have been imagining their favorite anime, television, and video game stars as tabletop RPGs since pen and paper first met. <laughs> That's what they're going to be doing. Uh, do, you want to, do you want to do Fortnite in your D&D? &D? It's more, it's more incorporated. The they Fortnite mentioned it. D &D. In this okay. article, they mention it. Uh... <laughs> Uh, main series such as Marvel, Fortnite, and Final Fantasy, the realm of fish edition compatible stat blocks and encounters. Yep. That's what they're doing. That's what they're doing. I mean, okay. I knew it was that way they were doing it, but it was it's that's what I thought it was, but it's a little different than I thought it was the way they're going about it, and it feels worse. <laughs> it does. It, 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 because they're comparing it to something, to universes beyond, which in my mind is kind of the a let's throw out a bunch of shitty stuff and just uh and make people who are kind of addicted to this pay for it <laughs> comparing it to that just makes me feel a little bit uh like this might not end well but yeah. i'll be honest D, D does a lot of this already like there are a lot of things you can buy like this already that's, um, that's what i mean is this stuff already exists in the rpg market in a lot of places already and i'm sorry yeah. 5th edition, even the new 5th edition rules are terrible for a lot of this stuff. 5th edition I works agree. pretty well for certain aspects of the new... Like, 5th edition is a very good cookie cutter, but you know what it's built for? Fantasy. If you would tell me, I'm going to do a D&D &D Lord of the Rings, or I'm going to do D&D &D Game of Thrones, or I'm going to do a D&D &D any fantasy genre kind of stuff, or some things on the side, like sci fantasies, maybe some of them, you could probably get away with it. And there are people that go out of their way to adapt 5e to different systems. But they do a lot of work. And I feel like the amount of work that Wizards is going to do is not going to be comparable to those people that come to Kickstarter or publish their own 5e things where they've it's, done the work to make something separate. I think th this is one of those things where I'm just like, this will either go very well or very poorly depending on how they approach it. And I'm hoping they approach it in the better way, but I kind of am expecting, like you kind of are, that they're not going to. It's the problem that, as much as there are a lot of people that do really good and are try to work very hard at D&D, &D, I think the thing about them laying off people, including in Wizards, this last year, shows us that they're not going to have the manpower for something like this. And it's, that's what yeah, I think no. we need. And here's another thing that a lot of companies just seem to completely ignore. A lot of big CEOs just seem to not understand. Is that when you fire a bunch of people, the people around them feel like their jobs aren't secure. And they lose, like, they, they don't work as hard or as well, you know? Mm -hmm. So, like, you're doing this whole thing. And then you're going to ask them to do more. And they're going to be like, well, why should I? You just fired some people around me. You know, there's this whole psychological thing that happens that most CEOs just look at numbers and be like, this costs this much money and we have this many employees. Let's cut it down because we're going to decrease production by X amount and the other people can be increased by X and amount. Again, and I'm sure people will pick up the slack. Yeah. Like, I'm going to say now, much more than magic, I think D&D &D being open up as a basic system for a lot of worlds is fine idea. It's just the fact that you can't take, like, the classes, the ancestry slash species, the magic system, all the stuff that you have in place for 5e and just throw it into anything. It doesn't work for Marvel. It doesn't work for, you know... I don't think it's... Fortnite or Final Fantasy. Bad. I don't think it's as bad as you're thinking. Like, I mean, you could easily... It, it Basically, as long as there are archetypes, you can have classes, and as long as there are, like, species, as, as long as there are, well, like... What, what, what I'm group yeah, of people you can have ancestries. What what I mean is like, you have to do put the work in for it, you know. Yes. And it's another new product line, another new product set, and you know, 
it there's there's a lot of work to balance it out and stuff like that. And yeah, I think the Wizards team does a good job, but they might not be able to do that, and they might have to outsource it to someone who might not do a good job. Like when you go to third party stuff, it's third party. We call it third party for a reason. It's a crapshoot that you have to analyze it yourself how good it is yeah. and how it works well, in your world. I feel like third party is um, fine. It just yeah, several third party well, yeah, it, studios. It, it's, yeah, okay, yeah. It, you, you have to kind of oh, like... such as Hit Point Press. Yeah, okay, so this was probably part of it. It's like they're... Yeah, so this is probably the start of it. Yeah, Hit Point Press's thing might be the start of this kind of thing that they're kind of adding in new worlds. And But they're just but taking honestly, another point, one. Yeah, but the Hit Point Press one does seem like it'd be pretty cool. Like, I'd love to get this one. And again, like, that, one's, that one of those feels more natural than the other stuff they've been talking about in the entire thing. Also because it's, yeah, it's... Uh, but yeah, like, it, it releases... Because it's also fantasy, which makes it easier. I'm pretty sure it was yeah. already another system that was using 5e anyway, you know? Mm -hmm. It was already another 5e system, probably, so it was pretty easy to add in there. But that's the thing is, are we going to get other people working on it, in which then is it going to be something like Hit Point... And I'm, I'm not saying Hit Point Press does not do a bad job, but it's the kind of thing is, yeah. why when someone talks about it, and I heard someone talking about it, they're like, you have to basically say, like, this is the... You know stuff that Hit Point Press did. This is the um, what's it called again? Sorry, goddamn it, my brain breaks on. You know the name of that uh, game for Hit Point Press. What is it? Uh, Humblewood. Oh, Humblewood. Yeah. Sorry, I've got a phone call here. I'm gonna mute myself on stream. Well, I wish you finished that idea before I continued, but um, yeah, I'm I'm going to choose to believe that things are going to be okay. Um. I generally feel like it's better to think yeah, that I'm curious about Ghostfire what I do, but anyway, um, yeah, I I tend to think that this really could go okay. There are enough people in the there are enough people in the community, um, in the magic or in the game community. Uh, to where I think you could get people who could put in the effort for this, but I just don't think it's um. But I agree, it depends, and Hasbro has not produced a lot of confidence right now, so... Yeah, okay. It, it, what were you saying? <laughs> I you Sorry, your uh, I'll finish my sentence, we'll, we'll move on, because uh, I've got a little bit of a schedule yep. now. Uh, my mom needs some, wanted, to, wanted me to come out and help her with something, it's like, I'll treat you to dinner afterwards, and I'm like, that's a good offer! <laughs> Taking me out somewhere. <laughs> and I, you know... Okay. So, uh, you know... Um, it's my thought pattern that, yes, there is a lot here, but I just I just hope whoever's working on it, it you know, it, my entire thing is, Hit Point Press, doing their stuff for Humblewood, made Humblewood with the idea of Humblewood, you know? It is a unique yeah. offshoot of D&D, but it's not necessarily compatible with everything else, and that could be true, but it's like, it, you have to be ready for playing Humblewood. It's, third-party stuff is always going to be like, you have to be ready to play it with itself, it's hard to add in. there's a lot of discussions on it like you know I, I like third party stuff but I also like I'm very like I want to look at third party stuff before I use it from anything beyond its space and you know I'm, I'm curious as directions they'll take you know we, we'll see we'll see it, it's when we yep. start seeing more stuff we'll get an idea about it um I, as I was saying though I'm going to just I know there are plenty of people who are willing to do a good job in the RPG community so I'm going to hope that that wins out. But yes, Hasbro has not sparked a lot of confidence. That's basically what I said while you were gone. Um, so I'll throw this one out here before we talk about Pi uh, Hasbro's uh, financials just briefly. Um, there is a D&D stage show. Um, it's 20-Sided Tavern. Um uh, stand-up routine, audience participation, you know, kind of things like that. Uh, um, okay. It's a live experience. I don't know how well this is going to go. If anybody sees it, let me know. Um, it's an interesting idea, but um, it, 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 if it's kind of like taking like a, a live play that someone would watch and bringing it to like a stage show, it could still work, you know? Um, so... I mean, we'll it kind of sounds. It kind of sounds like uh, whose line it is. Is it anyway? But Dungeons Me and Dragons theme. Yes. 
So, uh, I don't know. We'll see. That sounds very interesting, but also, yeah. like, I'm probably going to not care. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's talk about the horrible dragons that uh, Momo shared with us before we talk about Hasbro's financials. Okay. Uh, um, so, Spider I Dragon. These. Yeah. It was, in the love, Eye of Vecna book. Spider Dragon. Has, has that. And then the Conspirator Dragon will be in the Monster Core. Um, uh, for, yeah, for Paizo. So, yeah. For Paizo. So, is, so. Uh, basically, this is an article about uh, both Paizo and uh, uh, Wizards. Uh, Wizards, thank you. Yeah. How did I forget that? Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> uh, coming out with new dragons. Um, Very interesting ones, yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> spider uh, dragon, spider dragon. <laughs> yeah. Does everything a spider dragon can it's it's both horrifying and lovely. I love. It. I actually, <laughs> I find. I, uh, I actually find the uh, conspirator dragon from Paizo a lot more creepy with the fate with that face on top of its head. Well, again, it's like I do think it's going to be an interesting idea. We're going to be moving away from like more chromatic metallic dragons in Paizo because yeah. of moving from the OGL. And I'm interesting what direction they take for dragons. You know. Yes. Because and they, like this is they came up just a yeah a preview a. Yeah. Uh, what is it called? A sample. Yeah. So it's pretty neat stuff a there. Appetizer. Mm hmm All right. So just showing that out there. Uh, they're cool things to yep. look at. Um, I'm going to throw Hasbro's financial details into chat now, and then an article about Hasbro's financial details from Dicebreaker into chat. So they lost a billion dollars last year. Mm -hmm. Yep. <sighs> Let's see here. Uh, a fi uh, revenue declined 50% with the growth of Wizards of the Coast and digital gaming 10%, uh, more than offset by those declines, uh, a 19% de decrease in consumer products, and 31% in entertainment. Um, so, you know, digital was good because of Baldur's Gate. Wizards of the Cape so Wizards of the Coast grew, Baldur's Gate did good, everything declined overall. People sell toys don't get sold so much, and entertainment did bad. Bad. And Man, there was it's an, almost like during a recession, toys are the first thing to not yeah. get bought. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, an operating loss of uh, one hundred and fifty, one thousand five hundred thirty-nine million, including one point three billion of non-cash goodwill and intangible assets impairment charge associated with the E one film and TV. So it sounds like a lot of money was lost to their E one division. A lot, which has to be so much more than the D and D movie. I don't know what they were yeah. doing. Like the D and D movie made money; it just wasn't enough to be considered a success. Yeah, that's the thing too. So, like for them to lose money, there are probably a lot of other things. But Hasbro does own a lot of things. Like I'm trying to think. Like, uh, do they own uh, Trolls? Because I know there was like a Trolls movie that came out. I think recently <laughs> is. Why do I feel like this 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 operational excellence program involved firing a lot of people? Because delivered two hundred and twenty million of gross savings as part of operational excellence program. Uh, <laughs> that just doesn't feel right by the term there. I just don't know. That's so they sold. It is. It's um. Uh, the, it's, it's in the Hasbro, the first part of it, uh, for the 2023 yeah, highlights. Okay. Um, net loss on shares, uh, reduced inventory and, de and consumer good products inventory, sold off E1. Um, it was a lot of badness last year, apparently, you know, but Wizards gained some on the digital side because of, uh, um, Baldur's Gate 3 and Monopoly Go, apparently. Uh, apparently, also, like, the operating profit declined 2% and operating par par profit margin of 36.1 due to higher royalty costs associated with Universal Beyond. They're paying a shit ton of money to do Universal's Beyond and hoping to earn money on it. I think that's a thing that we, we don't think about. They're gambling for success with it to a degree. Gambling with success on what? Universal Universal's Beyond. Universal's Beyond, yeah. Wow. Um, 
because there was a lot. Apparently, the the royalties were like a higher cost or something. Um, so, operational excellence isn't a uh, like an operation they've nicknamed this. Mm-hmm. Uh, operational excellence is a uh, although I feel like this might have something to do with them firing people. Uh, it's a it's a thing about uh, it's a like a way of like training people. It's a business philosophy, and like you can do training and stuff to try and achieve this uh, to continuously improve uh, uh, processes and systems to achieve better, more efficient results. Mm-hmm. So. Basically, what it sounds like they're doing is they're firing people, then hiring people to, like, basically uh, teach those people how to be more efficient. <laughs> you know? That's what I'm guessing it is. I know. It's, a, it's like, it, this, the business philosophy itself is kind of nice. It actually sounds yeah. very pleasant. But I feel like the way they're probably going to go about it, just no one knowing what Hasbro's so going over we, lately, it's probably going to be dumb. Across the entirety of 2023, Wizards with D&D and Magic, including their digital, earned $1.07 billion. So thinking about that, and they had a $1.06 billion loss, meaning everything else cost them $2.13 billion. Because of how much Wizards offset that. Yeah. That's a pretty These big offset. These costs relate to the comprehensive review of the company's operations and development of a transformation plan to support the organization in identifying, realizing, and capturing savings, create efficiencies, and improve business processes and operations. These charges these charges consist of programs related to consultant and transformation office fees. Uh, let's see. Uh, respectively, and include selling, distribution, administration, corporate, uh, several other employee charges. Oh, severance and other employee charges. Okay, in the quarter and year end. Oh, yeah, no, that's part of it. Yep. Firing people is part of it. They actually clarify it. it. Yeah, I knew it. (laughs) All right. Uh, For the query, associated with cost savings in... uh, (laughs) I've heard enough. I've heard enough. That's that's what that means. Okay, they clarified it. They clarified it, and it doesn't sound good. Yeah, because I'm like, operational excellence charges. uh, Addendum, like... Three and I'm like, okay, let's so look at addendum three and I'm like, yep, that's what mm-hmm. it is. Let's uh, talk about some nice things. I'm done with D and D and Hasbro today. I'm sorry. Uh, this it it they have money by firing people. And they calling did. it efficiency. He did. Paizo brought us uh, an encounter about love. Isn't that nice on fourteenth? Um, that's not the only thing I wanted to chat, but I did want to mention this because it's funny because. Here's the difference that I, every time I see Paizo and they do little things like this where they're like, oh, it's Valentine's Day. We're bringing you an encounter about love. Do we have to make this? No. Are we? Yes. It's also completely free. Yeah. They're just doing yeah, something right? yeah, fun like that. It's like up at the side there. And they yeah. have a creature there, you know. It's funny, yep. little things. Um, they're also partnering with Michael Gaff Studios who do um, music. Uh, related to tabletop RPGs and stuff like that um, to bring more soundtracks to go with stuff. Um, (laughs) I love love one of the comments. I don't care that the Quiet Dao is technically a huge creature. It's just a sweet little guy to me. (laughs) It really does look like a sweet little guy, even though it's huge (laughs) in size. It's a funny little dude. This thing takes up up, uh, 15 feet by 15 feet. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) It's a funny little thing. Uh, yeah. That's a nice comment. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, uh, Pies is doing nice things. Uh, giving soundtracks to go along with uh, some of their um, t- music tailored to their adventure paths. It's a neat idea. And so... That's really cool, actually. Yeah. Um, the Seasons of the Ghost adventure path will have some music and a download the first track for free. You can actually do uh, for it. So, um, yeah. I'm and curious. Th- uh, I'm going to have to look into this because Season of the Ghost is one of the ones I'm uh, contemplating running for my yeah. live stream. So, uh, hmm. 
Uh, well, I'm going to look into how this can be streamed and stuff. Yeah. But it's actually kind of cool. Yeah, and then um, Seven Dubes of Sandpoint and Wardens of the Wild with the next two adventure paths will also have full-length full soundtracks to accompany them. So that's going to be really cool, too. So something to look forward to. This is a really cool idea, and I really enjoy that they're doing something neat like that. Um, so you may have to pay to get it. But... I'll wait on this one. I was going to do the Wandering Galaxy, but it's being announced for its Kickstarter. So we can talk about that when its Kickstarter is. So I'm going to make note that I'm going to wait for Wandering Galaxy. Um, uh, make a star there. We'll just... Um, get rid of it there um for now so we'll talk about plat hats wandering galaxy when it actually comes up on kickstarter um we have the ad astra book from free league press in their mutant mutant year zero uh core game uh system uh has been released um so it's i guess i don't know if it's set in the same uh, oh, so it is set in the, in the Mutant Year Zero world, but I guess this is like you're in orbit outside of Earth, the devastated Earth, and out into the solar system. So this is like, in Mutant Year Zero, it's like it is an apocalyptic Earth, but this is like beyond Earth adventures that like, you know, um, is it, can you know, has the apocalypse reached here, or is it something like, you know, separate from it? So interesting idea to take it for a different direction for them, and it's more Mutant Year Zero stuff. Okay, so it's basically, uh, the idea is, basically, yeah, so the galaxy's no longer livable, and you have to, people are outside of it or something, right? A little bit like that, yeah. Um, four more quick topics, and then we'll, uh, call it for today. I'll, I'll not do a deeper discussion topic, since I've been called upon to run out to the world. Um, but, uh, I'm liking Fantasy Grounds, because they have their... 4.5.0 test build that's out um, with new features oh. aimed to improve gameplay for game masters and players. I mean, I could check it out. I own it as long as I, as long as I, I can update it. Uh, let me know then if you want to do the test build and uh, we can get, get back to us on that one then. If, we, if you want to check it out this week and see what's uh, going on that maybe or may not be improved in Fantasy Grounds. Um, up to you on that one. But Grounds. For, it's there for people to... Uh, Check out. Ha! Ah, fantasy Grounds. Oh, that was old. That's, is there a new one? Um, I'm not doing that. I, I just got that there was the announcement of the 4.5.0 as a test build. I don't know if you if you have to do something to access the test build. Yeah. Um, there might be something you have if to do specifically to access those. It's open for public beta testing. So okay. you might have to look into the beta test for it. Specifically. Yeah. Um, I mean, I still don't think Fantasy Grounds is really all that worth it. It's a lot of money to basically... Like... Because you, you have to buy the GM version if you want your players to connect for free. Which basically means you have to like pay like 100 bucks for it. It's like... It's, it's a lot to basically be like... It, it's a lot for something that is... Honestly... Not that, not much better than Roll Twenty. Mm. It's like barely better. <laughs> so this better be. But I, they haven't done a major update like this in a long time, as far as I know. So this could be nice. Like Roll Twenty's added some nice uh, things to it here and there that I've been noticing. Like their UI, I took yeah, me no, a while no. to get used no, to it, but I like you, it. No, yeah, like World Twenty has been continually updating. Uh, basically, I don't. I haven't seen anything about an update to this system since I last used it in, like, 2020. You know, maybe later. Or, no, earlier, like 2018. Wow. So, well, no, hopefully it's something that they're fixing and building up something new. You know, you can see. Yep. Yeah. Um, hey, we are getting more books from the Avatar Legends RPG. So that's the, you know, uh, Avatar Last Bender, Legend of Korra kind of uh, game systems. They're doing Uncle Iroh's Adventure Guide. So, I mean, like, I, I haven't tried out the Avatar game. I hear pretty good things about it for them to put some new books out for it. Cool. Um, 
it's new mirror new materials uh uh it adds gm tools for multi-generational stories in your campaigns new pc legends player character archetypes and uh a new setting jasmine island um so yeah so like cool. four new character archetypes and uh, a bunch of and and they also do talk about some different eras too um that you could check out if you were interested in doing a bunch of the different eras within their universe uh with some information so very neat more stuff on them i always like yeah. when uh when the system continues yeah I don't, i'm curious to like what else because i know there's the two movies which are the only like truly if it, like i don't know if there's other official content like uh, okay. Uh, comics or something. So, for Avatar: The Last Airbender, the movie was not good, and it was M Night Shyamalan. He only did the yeah, one. Yeah, that one. Um, no, no, no. I, I'm saying, I'm saying the the two the two series. The uh, oh yeah, Korra. Uh, uh, the the, okay, and so Korra. so are... this I do know what's going on in the entire universe. After a long time, basically Nickelodeon, who kind of has the rights to it, basically won back the original creators and was like, have an animation studio make a bunch of content related to this universe. So that's what they're doing now. They're putting out movies and TV series that are going to be related to that universe now. And so they just started okay. working on that, I think, a year ago? And animation takes time, so... I, yeah, no, I was just wondering if there's any other official content, like... Um, the the like comics the are comic supposed books. to be can The comics are supposed to be canon, and they've had some comic books. Um, okay. So, yeah. Um, or just normal books or something. Yeah, okay. I was just curious because I don't, yeah, yeah. I don't, I'm not like that into Avatar, honestly. I watched them and I did look into some stuff as a curiosity. So I haven't really I read into the comic books. I did not finish Korra. I got so tired of it. I watched I, season one and I'm like, I don't care to continue. Korra, Korra has a lot of issues, and I think that the, I, I heard about uh, my, the big update, which was really interesting, was Korra's. A lot of Korra's issues stem from the fact that they never knew if they were going to get another season, so they yeah, could it, not do every, an interconnected story. Yeah, every ever it does. Yeah, no, I believe it. Yeah, um, an update. I just also think it was. I just also think it was kind of problematic starting off with. She knows all. Four, she knows three of the four. You know, I, I again, like, that was like a little. Like it's sort of like also like they they don't keep season arcs between them. I, I was I was watching someone talk about that uh, like a, a couple months ago. So this is actually an interesting thing that like they they were saying like unfortunately between the different seasons they don't keep character arcs very well and that's an issue for maintaining like a level of it like there is a character arc in the first one there she goes from this like because she starts out so strong she's very overconfident you know and then she kind of gets yeah. humbled and learns a different way by the end of it and then forgets all about that in season two and goes off in a different direction and season two is just really bad and in season three they kind of bring it back a little bit and so like you know that's kind of how it is and it's like unfortunately Yes, when you don't, when you have these very inner d disconnected seasons, it doesn't help either. And like you know, some were better than others. Anyway, um, yep. uh, we talked about the community mega dungeon to honor uh, Janelle Jaque. Apparently, uh, they're seeking to do a physical book for it. Um, so there is a project uh, that's going up. I will. Where is the link? Is it in here? There's a crowdfunding campaign uh, for it. That's linked in there. Um, to... I can do it. I... Okay. I found the crowdfunding page here, too. I can link that, too. Uh, oh, there you go. Okay. So, yeah. Um, that's really cool that they're continuing to, like, do this. And it's going to have, you know, more proceeds to the entire thing that's going on. And, you know, um, it's an update on the, the what we talked about before, basically. And, and it's, a, you know, cool that they're doing more of this. So, I, I just want to shout it out honestly um so we're also we're getting free league nexus um some point soon we'll probably have to talk about it again but effectively free league wants to do a D, D beyond type situation and so they're coming up with free league nexus um that they're going to be using for that and um it'll be joining uh mutant year zero will also be on there um, they're planning uh, Gothic RPG Vassin, sci-fi series Coriolis, and Forbidden Lands, the fantasy for a bit, will be also, like, eventually put into this entire set of things, it sounds like. Um, this has been in development for a number of years, um, and it's getting a full release later on this month, finally. Um, so this is a thing that they've been talking about since 2021. Okay, they have Alien, uh, Blade Runner... Yeah, so I, we'll have to see the okay. we'll have to see the full list of like 
right now we might only have Alien the RPG on it, but they'll probably put other like toolkits and stuff on there, you know, as they go. Um, yeah. So you know, we've seen other people do online toolkits. It's not bad. Yeah. You know. I this... mean, Pathfinders is currently the best, in my opinion. We'll see more. Their archives of Nethys. Archives of Nethys is also just this wonderful place to go for stuff, too. And I think it's sort of like, you know, you get information there if you want information. Um, yeah. But they're also like, ah, you only need 30 bucks for the core rule book. And I'm just like, I don't care. Let's yeah. go to the Wik wiki site then. It's like, why? I know you're trying to like make money off of this, but better just to use it as like a way to advertise your books. <laughs> Because that's actually why I buy Paizo books. Because I'm like, I want to support them. <laughs> yeah. It's like they, they offer an, a free online of everything. And they're like, you know, you know, if you also want to buy the books, it would be great. And people are like, you know, I also kind of want to buy the books. It turns out, when you bring goodwill to the community, people love you. Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to put this as our topic. Had to run! Uh, so... Let's talk about uh, our week, our weekend tabletop, and then we'll finish up today. Yeah, Let's it has see. been an hour and a half, and I, I do technically I, I was asked to run off, and uh, yes, I could cancel it, but I like helping my mom too. You know, oh, I so. I get it, I get it. It's hard you know. to turn down free food. <laughs> <laughs> That's only like thirty three percent of it, forty five percent of it. <laughs> um. Anyway, uh, um, uh, yeah, I mean, I only had uh, Crimson Queen, so yeah, we had Crimson Queen, um, which went, I think, went pretty well. Uh, you fought against some vampire spawns, which was unexpected for you guys, but you had a cleric, they got murdered. <laughs> yeah, thankfully, we had a cleric who had positive energy spells. Honestly speaking, like, you could have also surprised them all or something, uh, too. I mean, yeah, it, and it sounds like you, you didn't realize this, but their coffins were just in the basement. So, <laughs> there wasn't. The, the thing is, they don't mention it until the loot. I was looking everywhere for where it was, and I didn't think to look in the loot section to figure out where their <laughs> coffins were. It's like, really? Yeah, yeah it's funny because you mentioned a trap door and i'm like okay so there's a basement but I, I, it didn't yeah. come up until you mentioned the loot. i was like the looking basement, there are coffins yeah. and i'm I, like oh it was, it's like not a major basement and i was like looking through there i'm like what do you say on the basement do you say anything on the basement no okay whatever i guess it's just a thing that's there you don't mention for me thanks game <laughs> yes because so. uh, it's funny because you mentioned a trap door yeah in the description in the like the written description so it's just kind of funny how it's like so there was the yeah I'm like oh they must be in the basement but then you're like oh they don't mention it anywhere and I'm like what and yeah. you finally got to the yeah. loot and you're just like oh yeah. here it is <laughs> yeah uh, you learned that uh, basically these vampire spawns were in the city because they were supposed to in quotations look after a Nosferatu that works for a vampire lord in Ustalov uh, who's been hired to help out the Red Mantis assassins for some reason. Well, uh, the reason seems to be, based on his expertise, <laughs> related to magical diseases. Yes. So, so there's a, there's, is that related to the cult putting a disease in the city? Or are they just incidentally using what they found out the cult was going to do to an advantage? Okay, my personal thought is that they may have caught word of something and someone, like, may maybe the Red Mantises are trying to deal with the plague. They caught word of it ahead of time, because for these people to actually have been here this whole time, they would have had to catch word ahead of time. So maybe, maybe some other person is trying to stop some other person's plan. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot there's of... A, it it awesome. just yells more political intrigue, unfortunately, that you're wandering into. Yeah. I mean... I'm kind of waiting for us to actually have to deal with the political intrigue. So far, it's been like, there's political intrigue that's affecting everything, but you guys over are over here. <laughs> well, that's going on. You're theoretically, in the next do. session, you may very well hit it fr face front. Okay, Th that would be interesting, because I feel like there's a lot of political intrigue going on in the background, and I'm just like, yeah. so when are we going to deal with that? <laughs> yeah. 
Um, I feel like so, it's coming, but I'm not certain because this adventure it, has been very weird yeah, so far. <laughs> this adventure leads into a lot more of it in the next one, basically. But it's kind of like it. your efforts here get you begin to get you more noticed, and involved, and a lot more stuff. You know, you've been slowly gaining notoriety. Yep. Uh, like, with man, both the good and bad keeps people. happening, and these people keep showing up. <laughs> yeah, that kind of stuff too. So, I think it was a fun session, and you have your mission for next time, which will be uh, going to a party. Yeah, no, I mean, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully it's a party. That's the best outcome. <laughs> There's some evidence that screams maybe things have already gone bad at that party, but you never know. That's why, that's why you're going to a party, and that's why I'm like, no, it's not a party. And I'm like, well, technically it is. Hopefully it is. <laughs> uh... Yeah, uh, and then um, I we did have I did have um, Momo's game on Thursday, which was very interesting. Where we met uh, Kitsune, who was in a pocket dimension that we had to do a ritual. This book told us about to go meet with her. We learned a bunch of stuff related about what's going on. You know, we kind of got some hints on what we have to do, and so we're kind of finally on our actual like this is our mission portion of stuff. And why are we like? Why were we summoned to this town in the first place by a trickery? You know, that kind of stuff. So we are, we're finally on the right path, which was cool. Um, but that was most of the same. Oh, yeah. I, now I remember because, like, last time you were like, oh, uh, yeah, because if I, I told you the truth, you wouldn't have believed me. It was, like, the reason for the plot hook. Plot hooks. Yeah. Uh, and I think that was it for this week, I guess. Yeah, we have Joe's game tomorrow, so we'll be talking about that next week. All right, I think I get up running. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Uh, I hope everybody has a great rest of your day. We'll have a deeper discussion topic. Uh, I promise an actual deeper discussion topic next week. But we did have a lot of shit by wizards this week. So, I mean, hopefully it'll be down to Kinda, like an yeah. actually nice, quiet week next week. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Anyway, catch me on Twitch.tv slash Diamond Worm. Yep. All right, Diamond Worm on Twitter. And me, uh, every day of the week except for Sundays. I'll be back on Monday. I'm going to try the Parasite of 2 randomizer. Tabletop, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays. Check it out. Or Tuesdays, Thursdays, Friday, Saturdays. I can speak. Uh, Crimson Queen, I'll be Wednesday, 9 p.m. EST. Check it out. And this show next week at 6 p.m. All right, everybody. I'm going to get running. So farewell. Goodbye. Bye.